Hey everyone, in today's video, I'm gonna teach you how to take your existing jazz vocabulary and literally double it or triple it and quadruple it without having to learn any new licks or any new language. That's right, you can take the licks you already play and are sick of and turn them into a wealth of new jazz language and vocabulary. And all that with the help of one simple exercise. So let's get right into it. So how can we do that? How can we take our existing jazz vocabulary, whether it's big or small, and turn it into a wealth of new language? How can we take the old and make it into something new? Well, all it requires is a shift in perspective and a fresh way of looking at what we already play today. So what do I mean by that? Let me demonstrate. Suppose I play a phrase like this. Let me play it again. Right? You think I just played a phrase or a lick, right? But in reality, what I really played is not a phrase and not a lick, but a shape. This is a shape. You might ask me, hey, what difference does it make if you call it a lick or a shape? Well, here's the difference. A shape can be moved around within the chord scale it's in. A shape can also be confined to other chord scales. If we treat licks as shapes, then all of a sudden they become like Lego pieces. You could move them around and put them here, or put them there, or put them somewhere else. Let me demonstrate what I mean. I'm going to demonstrate it with this shape, and you can later do it with any other lick or any other bit of language that you play in your own improvisations, as long as you understand the principle of what I'm about to show you. So back to the shape. Right? The first thing we need to do is to determine the chord scale in which this shape resides. In this particular case, it's a minor major 7 scale. Right? That's the chord scale in which I'm playing the shape. Now, now that we know what the shape is and what the chord scale is, here's where the magic happens. You can move this shape around in the chord scale. Right? What if I was to play all of these notes from this lick, or from this shape, one step up, but not in terms of like a whole step up, like an interval, but one step up within the chord scale, right? So the first three notes are, right? First three notes. What if we were to move these three notes up in the chord scale, like... So, so... You see what I'm doing? This is the original. Move it a step up within the chord scale. It sounds like this. Move it two steps. Move it three steps within the chord scale and you get this. You see what I'm doing? I'm treating this lick as a shape, and a shape can be moved around. Moved around where? Moved around the chord scale in which it lives. And the only obligation you have there is to confine the shape to the notes of the chord scale and not stray from those notes, right? So. Do you see what I'm doing? This is a bunch of new language, and it sounds awesome, and it all works within the chord scale. So next time C minor major 7 comes around, you don't have to play that same old boring lick you always play. You could play that same old boring lick moved a step up within the chord scale, or two steps up within the chord scale. So let's take some other lick or shape 
from some other chord scale, not minor major seven. Let's take something from say a C7 chord, like a dominant sound, right? That's a pretty popular lick. People play it all the time. Like kind of a beboppy sort of. So again, so how do we squeeze the juice out of this one? Right? We have to first of all determine what is the chord scale? What are we going to confine this to? So it's C mixolydian. Right, before we can do this method that I'm teaching you, first of all, you have to know what the chord scale is within which this shape resides, right? This does not live in a C minor, right? No, this also doesn't live within C Lydian. No, no. In our case, it's C mixolydian. It's a dominant sound. Once you've determined the chord scale in which this shape resides, you can start moving the shape around within the chord scale. It's important to first determine the chord scale in which the shape resides, because in order to move the shape within the chord scale, you have to know which notes are available to you and which notes aren't. At some point, if you start moving the shape around, you're going to have to decide, is the next note A natural or A flat? Is the next note D sharp or D natural? And you can only make those decisions based on knowing what are the notes within the chord scale you're working with, right? So you can't really start moving the shape around until you determine what the chord scale is, because without knowing what the chord scale is, you don't know which notes are available to you to move the shape within and which notes aren't available. So in this example, the chord scale is C mixolydian. So suppose this is a lick I always play, and I'm sick of it. Every time there's a C7 chord, I go, great, boring. So what do I do? How do I freshen it up? Let me start moving it around within the chord scale it resides in. All right, so let's see. Oh. Oh, sorry. Ah, interesting. That's a new bit of language. I don't. I never play. I only play. I never play. That's awesome. That sounds really great. How about next one? Wow, that's really cool. I'm not telling you to play them one after another, after another, after another, like I'm doing here. I'm just demonstrating. But I'm telling you, like, here's a bit of language I was sick of, and I was able to turn it into a bunch of new language that sounds awesome and works within the same chord over which I would have usually played that initial bit of language, right? I would have usually played this on a C7 chord. But guess what? Everything I derive from this bit of language, like this, all of that is going to work on that same C7, and I never have to do this again. Or at least I can expand on it. So, do you see how I took that one lick and turned it into a wealth of new language? Now, of course, you're going to have to practice all of these things, but I'm saying you're sitting on gold. Everything you're already playing has a million times more potential within it that you're probably not tapping into. And an exercise like this can take your existing jazz language that you already play, that you're probably sick of because you play it all the time, and literally open it up and create an ocean of new language based on the language that you already play. If that wasn't enough, some exercise like this will also help you control chord scales much better and will improve your ability to play on changes in general. Please understand that every lick you play today, every phrase you've ever played that you love or hate or you're bored with or excited about, any bit of language can be moved around like this and help you generate a wealth of new vocabulary without having to transcribe anyone's solos, without having to transcribe anyone's licks, without having to do any of that. Not that I'm telling you not to do those other things, by all means do. But what I'm saying, why don't you squeeze the juice out of the things that you already know how to play? Let's face it, 
All of you watching this video have some bits of language that you already use on a regular basis. If you're like most people, you're probably sick of most of the licks you play because you play them all the time and you're tired of them. I know I'm tired of mine. So here is a fresh new way to take the language we already know and really squeeze the juice out of it, reap every possible benefit out of it. So your quote-unquote homework should be clear. Take any bit of language you already play, determine what the chord scale there is, and start moving it around in the chord scale. And yes, at that point, you're going to have to practice a little bit. Because even though these new bits of language came from your old bits of language, they are nevertheless new bits of language, and you're going to have to ingrain them into your playing. But that is something that is worth spending time doing because the benefits are many. Your vocabulary will expand. Your ability to play on changes will expand. Your ability to control modes and chord scales will vastly expand. So I highly recommend this. And you can literally do this with every mode and every phrase and every lick. Hell, you can even do it with the lick. right? <laughs> Any bit of language will work. And you can do it in a major 7 scale. Say this is the lick, right? See, I just did it quickly within a major 7 scale with this lick. Any bit of language, any chord scale. It will all work. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is a bonus. And that is how to take a bit of language and confine it to a different chord scale so that you could then run it within that different chord scale. Because again, if it's a shape, it can be confined to its own chord scale and moved around within there. Or it can be confined to a whole other chord scale because a shape is a shape. You just change some of the notes and confine them to a new chord scale. And boom, all of a sudden you have that same shape confined to a new chord scale, and now you can move that same shape within a new chord scale. So remember that minor major seven thing I showed you in the beginning of the video? And how we moved that around, right? Let's pretend we want to confine that to a different chord scale. Right now it's confined to a minor major seven, right? What if I want to confine it to a major? Let's, I want to keep that same shape, but play it on a major chord scale, like Ionian. So instead of having it be minor, we're going to confine it to a major. So what's in our way? That third, that minor third is on our way. We have to make that minor third into a major third. And all of a sudden, we are confining that same shape to a major chord scale. Instead of... See? And now, I can start moving it around the major chord scale, just like I did with the minor before. New language, woo! <laughs> right? Suppose I want to confine it to a Lydian. So what does it mean? It, Lydian means raised four, right? So instead of major chord scale, Lydian is major with a raised four. Oh, no, no, no. Yep. Do you understand what I did? You basically determine the scale to know which notes are available to you, and then you confine it to the notes of that scale. Here's how the shape sounds when confined to a major seven, Ionian, C major scale. You see, I hit F natural, not F sharp, because this is Ionian, this is C major, not C Lydian. But if I want to confine it to a Lydian, every time I hit that F note, I have to make that F note into an F sharp. 
and boom, right there, the shape becomes confined to a C Lydian scale. See? I could decide that I'm going to confine it to some other scale. The possibilities are literally endless. All I want to teach you here is to start seeing the licks you play as shapes within chord scales. If you start seeing the licks you play as shapes within chord scales, you're going to get a lot more flexibility with the language that you already have today. Because guess what? Newsflash. The language you're playing today is already shapes within chord scales, whether you know it or not. So why not acknowledge it and treat it as such and open all of these possibilities for yourself? You can take the shape and run it within its own chord scale. You can change the chord scale that you want to confine it to and then confine it to that other chord scale and then run it within that chord scale up and down. Then you can take that same shape and say, I want to do it in a third chord scale and then confine it to that chord scale and run it up and down within the notes of that chord scale. And there you have an ocean ocean of vocabulary, an ocean of language that you generated out of the same old licks that you've been playing for years and years. I think it's pretty efficient and pretty smart. That's about it, you guys. I hope you found this helpful and that you will now be able to transform your existing vocabulary into an ocean of new vocabulary. Please let me know what you thought about this exercise. I make a lot more videos like these about improvisation, harmony, creativity, and artistic exploration. If you like this video, please hit that like button down below and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, join our early notification squad by hitting that notification button down below so you could be notified every time I make one of these videos. If you have any questions, please write them in the comments below. I literally answer every single person, no matter how many comments I get, and I try to coach you guys through these exercises that I show you in the video. Thank you for checking out the channel, and I'll see you next time. Peace.